Thanks, Sarah. So this is our chance to dig in a little deeper uh, compared to what we would normally do so that those of you who want to learn more about the nuances of the ID, we can do that. And one of the things that has come up a few times, um, and Richard, actually, you've raised this as well, is to talk about more the whole ID. Often when we talk about ID, helping people understand it first up, we, we break it down and, and talk about the drives. And that normally is, you know, incredibly insightful and we've got to be careful not to overwhelm people. But as you get more and more familiar, people are often intrigued as to how do the drives interact together to, you know, form the totality of how you show up in the world. So we can deal with that today. But one of the, um, one of the sort of hang topics hanging over was a question that Judy, you raised last week. Um, and I'm just wondering how to, whether Alex is far away. Do you have any idea of when she's joining Judy? I'll, I'll call her. Well, oh, okay. Because Judy raised a really good point, which was um, just to maybe lay it up. Judy and Alex have a really neat friendship and have been developing that friendship over, you know, I think now quite a few years. But as Judy has gotten more and more into stride, spinning him. Um, it's made Alex feel like she's not as needed in the friendship. And I thought it would be a really good thing for us to explore here about how people can be their whole selves and be really in stride, but still have that interdependency and, you know, connection with um, others around them. Because I know that's an issue in many relationships. Hello. And people don't always talk Hi, about Paul it. Paul is asking for you. <laughs> okay, good. Well, I, um, like, I'll you can mute us, Sarah. Yeah, sorry. Here we go. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think it's relevant to a lot of people. Like, I, I find even people when they're thinking about the amount that they dedicate to work, they often, I think what's happening subconsciously is I think, well, I'm not really needed at home. You know, my wife or husband, whoever's sort of controlling things at home has got that so under control that I'm not really needed there, you know? So they focus in other areas. But I think when it comes down to the human dynamic of, of feeling needed and valued by another, um, that's a really good topic to explore. So I thought, that would be worth doing, but it'd be better doing that when Alex is here and on She's the call. I'm sorry, Judy. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so maybe while we're waiting for that to happen, we'll just take a um, a pulse of where people are at on their peak performance indicator. I know that that's something a lot of people look forward to just having um, the accountability for as we do these calls each week. It's just on that scale of zero to 10, 10 being where you're really in stride where would you rate yourself today? And whether you use a number or whether you want to use a different expression, you might just open up the chat and put your number in the chat. Um, whatever you consider to be true for you today. It looks like Western Australia is at an eight today. Good old WA. Richard Maria, an eight. Grant, good on you, Grant. That's awesome. See what happens when you turn 50? Everything comes together. <laughs> wow, that's interesting, Judy. We can talk about that. Yeah, I would These love good scores. I would say I'm a, I'd feel like I'm a nine today. Um, probably just need more things to sort of like click for it to be a 10, but in a good place. So these are really good scores. Hey, Greg. I'm just letting you know that uh, I realized uh, last week that I was in the the anniversary week of the first time I ever found my ID with Tracy back in June uh, oh, 2001. Yes. That's so I've right. Done, I, I want my 20 year pin. Okay. I'll get you. I'll get you a 20 year pen. Pin. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I I actually remember that class, and I don't remember that many of them, but I remember. And then the you know the many many meetings and conversations that sort of happened after that and you know with you as you sort of were peeling back all the different things that you were not just learning but integrating you know with what you'd learned and so many other models and yeah well it's been a great 20 years knowing you greg and sharing with you and learning from you as much as you know you learning about id so ditto ditto uh, thanks for the <coughs> event. would You're i welcome. throw in the that Bethany was also in that class. Yes. Was she? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, she was. 
Wow, there you go. Yeah, there's a lot of history with some people, isn't there? You know, it's amazing. And Ian, Ian was in as well. Uh, and Julian Barton, I remember being there too. So that's her. Too. I, I do have a list of everyone I should I should look at it. <laughs> um, so spare a thought for Ian. He's just had some surgery this week. He got a bit wow. of a cancer scare, so they've had to take it out. And um, he's doing well, but he just had to go. Sort of came out of the blue, so he's had to go and get that addressed. So anyway. So, um, hey, Judy, do you want to, is it something you feel comfortable talking to, this, the fact you've moved so much in the last few hours? I, I would, I love to talk about whatever's happening to me. So I was a 10, and then I had a conversation a couple of hours ago with a gentleman who is a friend of mine, and uh, he lives in Canada. He's, uh, he and I have a joint venture agreement and so we're working together and, and he said, how are you doing? And I said, I'm doing just great. Really, really great. Everything is wonderful. And I said, you know, uh, after Joe passed away, I, I really, um, I, I, I didn't feel like grieving, you know, the church said, you know, we've got some classes for grieving. And I thought, I don't, I don't feel like I need to grieve. I'm happy with where Joe is. He's he's not trapped in his body. His body didn't support his, support his purpose anymore. And so I I said, and now all of a sudden, just in the last couple of weeks, I'm I feel like I'm grieving. When I think of him, I cry and and all that. And he said, Well, that's gonna keep happening now. That's gonna keep happening. And I said, I would appreciate it if you would not say that. That is not supportive to me. You have no idea what is going to happen with me. He said, well, I just want to support you and help you so that when it shows up, you'll know what to do. And I said, I'm sorry, I do not want to hear that. That is not helpful. So he apologized then. But I was, I, I don't like when people tell me that I'm gonna, this is gonna happen, you know, I'm gonna feel this way or it's gonna continue or whatever. It really, really irritates me. So I had to get mad and scream and holler a little bit and then now I'm better again. What, what's important though is how did you get better? What did you do to get from being flattened to back in stride? What did you do? I had a, a friend of mine was here doing some work here and I said, Sam, I, I just need to share some things. Could you listen for me? I asked him to listen and he did. And, and you know, he, well, he said, don't, don't get pissed off, Judy. And I said, well, I am pissed off. I'm, it, no, it's not about getting, but he did listen and that helped. Listening always helps. Well, it's, you say limpid listening. I think what's important, and we learned this from you a few months ago, it's the empathy that, that, you know, I remember that happening in a call that we had with you, the minute you felt listened to in the, and where people got you, that sense of empathy for anyone who's an avoid verifier, when they feel through the sharing and listening that someone truly gets the their energy, gets their emotion, that has a lot to do, I think, with helping you then feel a different sense of calm and centeredness and getting back in stride. So, you know, I, I ask you that, one, for your benefit, but, but two, for anyone else that, can take that from you as well from your experience and get that benefit for themselves thanks for sharing judy oh you're welcome thank you it's my pleasure so with that welcome alex nice to have you along again um you know we quickly spoke via email but um judy why don't you maybe introduce what was happening for you and alex and then alex just so everyone knows alex and judy have agreed to talk about this openly for the benefit of the group as well as whatever additional benefits they might get from it themselves. So let's just listen to their, the challenge that they had. And then, you know, we collectively can either help and or learn. Where are you at, Alex? There you are. Also, well, Judy, would you, can, would you consider um, putting your ID next to your name? So as we're talking about these things, people know yeah. what your ID is compared uh, to mine. She's on mute. Here, she's. So I might just 
I usually four, seven. Do my ID next to my name. Mm -hmm. What's your numbers, Judy? It's 4474? Four, four, four? No, 4574. Four. 4574. Four, four, four. So, here we go. There you there go. Thanks, go. Judy. Thanks, Judy. Okay, I'm ready. So, I really didn't know anything was not right. I was just being myself. I was having a good time. And then I guess on Monday, when we'd been to Glenwood Springs, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday morning, I think Alex texted me and said, is there anything we need to talk about? I said, no. Now, a couple of times when we were uh, in Glenwood, uh, she, she seemed stressed, but other than that, that was all I noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to kind of give you guys a background of Judy and I's relationship, um, you know, there's just a little bit of an age difference. Um, I'm just a little bit older than she is. So, you know, naturally I take care of her a lot. <laughs> because I'm the wise older one. <laughs> so um, all jokes aside, though, her and I have known each other a couple of years. And when we met, Judy was not who she is today. Um, you know, she was in there, but the way that she shows up is it, it was complete, completely different before. And so when I came into Judy's life, she really needed me in very obvious ways. Um, I almost felt like a caregiver for her when I'm at her home, you know, help clean her house and cook. And I still cook for us, but that's because um, I'm a good cook for breakfast. She cooks dinner. So, um, but when I was, when I'd be over there, um, I was very useful, very helpful. And since Judy's 80th birthday, which, which was just, um, almost a, almost a, a month ago right almost a month ago um and since really practicing her id since she has put on the complete drive the complete uh she says putting on the cloak or the full something like that what do you what do you call it judy something like that the cloak or the uniform yeah. or something yeah like she really embraced her strength as a completer and i've noticed her changing right? Like she is more energized. She is, um, I would say energized is the biggest word. And so that's, that's great. And I didn't notice that her needing me was kind of going down, right? And so we went to Glenwood and throughout our time in Glenwood Springs here in Colorado, it's a nice mountain town. Um, the drive there is about three to four hours. We drive back, obviously it's three to four hours. And then while we were there, um, Judy's just talking to everybody that we see. And I'm like, why are you talking to everyone? Like, we don't need to talk to anybody. We're on vacation. Why are you making all these friends? Like, you don't even know if these people want to talk to you, like stop talking to everyone. And then I like, she'd go out everywhere we went, we'd get out of the car and within, within five feet, she'd make a new friend. And I'm like, oh my God, this has to stop. Like, I can't handle this. And then, so I, I'm not be that person. I just get on my phone and go sit somewhere while she gives the same spiel about who she is and what she does and asking them questions. I'm like, who cares? <laughs> like, I was really negative. I was not in a good space <laughs> for many reasons, but um, that had nothing to do with Judy. Um, May was just an interesting month for me, navigating some challenging stuff in my personal life. And so when we went, she's on like cloud nine. So when we got back on Monday, like she said, I felt like she had to have known that I was just like totally dissatisfied with the entire trip, like, and not interested in ever going anywhere again with Judy. And that's not like me and her, her and I are like best friends. And she's, she, she means more to me than a lot of people in my life. And she's very important um, to me to know that she's okay and that she's living her best life. And on Monday, I was like, I don't even know, I don't even know if we're friends anymore. Like she didn't even need me. You know, like she got all these other friends to hang out with um, from Glenwood. So um, that's kind of the backstory. And then um, in the in the last couple of weeks, 
since we've been back, I've discovered that it was because I wasn't being useful to her anymore. And I have a high authenticate. So one of my, one of the ways I feel like I'm in stride is when there's useful outcomes, hands-on involvement, um, literal and candid communication. And I didn't know how to have literal and candid communication with my completer best friend because it's her 80th birthday trip. So I didn't want to like start any potential arguments by us, by me not appreciating her not needing me like at all. Um, and yeah, so, so that was, that was, that's kind of my experience. And after we figured that out, it's been very helpful um, because I'm not a completer. Um, I have a three incomplete and she has a seven. And yeah, so that's what I have to say, Judy. What, anything else that we should add? I, I remember you told me too, you said uh, that, you know, that trip was three hours too much and you were never gonna be on another three hour trip with me or something like that. And we have a plan, we have a trip plan to Wichita, Kansas in uh -huh. October. And I thought, well, that's done. And, um, but it, it, you know, I, I was just being myself and, and I was being myself in the, you know, the, my complete is a seven, which is a 70. I was a 70, believe me. Mm -hmm. So we, Judy, as a, as a really strong completer who also needs harmony, how was it for you to learn how, uh, how Alex was? feeling about everything well, i i really didn't notice that much uh on her on her once she told you once she told you once oh when she told me i said oh you need to be more useful to me so then i began thinking how i could phrase things so she would know that she was helping me like picking up the drywall alex you know I, there was a guy who had free drywall and I asked her, could you, could you pick that up for me? It seems like it's pretty close to your house. And she, oh, I'd be happy to. I'm, oh, oh gosh, yes, absolutely. And then I had confirmation of how much my needing her really helped her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But while we were there, I was just having a ball. And she was, you know, she cooked breakfast and we went around town and so now that you've now that you've had these realizations, do you feel like you've um you know resumed your previous connection or is there still a gap or do you need some healing still to happen? How how is it for you for you, Alex? Yeah, I feel like it's better than it was before. And I think for me when we go to Kansas, being more um, like being in the car with someone for a long time, you know, just being more candid and literal about what I, what, what feels calm and what doesn't. So like when we, when we were driving and when we were there, Judy had a lot of conversations with other people. And I really wanted to be able to have just my own conversations with her and just, just be in in the moment and just have that back and forth conversation. And Judy was, so, I mean, 70 with her complete, it was, and it was her, it was her birthday. So I felt like one of the things that we may or may not have already talked, well, we did talk about it. Um, I kind of broke down like a week after coming back because Judy didn't recognize at all that I was out of harmony with her. And over, and I'm over here like, I don't want to have this conversation with her and tell her, Hey, I'm really not feeling loved. I'm not feeling seen. I'm not feeling heard. I'm not feeling useful. All of this stuff. Um, but I, we had to, because that's how that's, that's who we are with each other. And, and we, we have open communication. So I was like crying, um, that I just, I want us to have more 50, 50 kind of conversations. Cause I remember it was just like all, Judy was just doing all the talking. And one of the reasons I fell in love with Judy is that she listens to me and a lot of other people in my life, because I'm in leadership roles and in sales, I listen to people all day. And she's one of my friends that listens to me. 
and we go back and forth on communication. And since she was in stride, I felt like it was just, you know, it was all about Judy. And I was like, I really don't want to lose this friendship, but I can't be in friendships with people who only talk about themselves. And that's not the Judy I was used to. And so learning how to communicate again and with her being in stride is has been really enjoyable because she is so amazing and is learning how to communicate with me based on her understanding of the ID. I'm still very green to learning how to use the ID. <laughs> so I am very grateful for, for you, Judy, and your your wisdom and experience and understanding and compassion and grace and forgiveness and all those all those things. But, but how cool that even even as green as you might feel that you are, you know, with that sort of white belt, even just that level of knowledge, look at the difference it's made and how you've been able to, you know, reference it to be able to, you know, reclaim your relationship that otherwise, I mean, how many other people have a similar situation and they don't know how to deal with it? They don't have a framework to be able to understand those differences and it ends up completely destroying their relationship, whether it be a friendship or whether it be a marriage or whether it's a relationship between a parent and a child, you know, um, even at an adult level, that's it just shows the potential of what could go wrong. And, and you've been great role models for how to, through being honest and more self-aware and empathetic about the other, you've been able to reclaim your friendship. So I can assure you, we all sit here today with enormous admiration and respect for just listening to the way you've dealt with it. And the fact that you care enough about each other to want to do that is just awesome. But I, I thought it was a great, a great you know call out to, that being in full flight when we're in stride and we're in full flight whilst that's maybe great for you there's a potential danger for people around you for how you might be coming across to them you know um and i'm, I'm curious to see if other people have experienced something like that um and maybe, maybe it's different but i do know that there's a danger that when you are in full flight you can be almost too loud, um, and whether it's sucking oxygen or dominating, you know, a relationship, whatever it might be, or just you're not as in tune, maybe to other people who are needy or not in the same place as you. I just know that what you experienced is potentially something that occurs much more broadly, and um, I want to create the space for any others to talk about that as well. Judy, is there something you want to share? Just two things. Number one, what ID has done for my life is absolutely indescribable. I have never in my life felt happier, freer, healthier than I am right now. The stress Stress does not work, and I've had it my entire life to some degree. My father not being there, not having a brother, I wanted a brother, three husbands who were, well, I wouldn't have divorced them if they'd have been good husbands, you know, the kind of husband I was looking for. And, and now that I don't have the stress of Joe, I just, I feel so free and actually, in, in 2018, it was suggested that I might be manic. I mean, that's, I mean, I just, and, and that's probably the way I was in Glenwood. I was just so happy. I mean, it was, we were away, staying in an Airbnb. And so it, you know, I've thought about that lately, about the manic and, and the, manic depressive or whatever that all those diagnoses are because when when i didn't have the energy i was definitely depressed mm. and so i just i just put that out there because i've been thinking about that Thanks, um <laughs> paul could i ask a question of alex because i noticed that she's also an improviser as strongly as authenticate. And would part of the problem also have been, not only wasn't she useful, but she also 
was taking a back seat because it was Judy's time. And so she also couldn't put, be herself because of a, of a decision she'd made. And um, sometimes, I don't know, as a strong improviser, I just sort of think, well, perhaps taking a back seat isn't always the smartest way to go. So maybe there's another element in there, Alex, when you look at your whole ID, it's not just as simple as not being useful. I'd really welcome your comment. Yeah, I, I think that's really good. Um, that's really good insight, Gail. And I know you're really high on improvise, um, like extremely high, like that's your thing. Um, so yeah, I did take a back seat because I wanted it to be, um, I wanted there to just be, I wanted, I wanted Judy to have harmony in her experience in Glenwood. And so I thought, okay, we're here for three days. We're with each other. Cause as soon as we, as soon as, as soon as we got in the car or even, even before we got in the car, um, the way that Judy wanted to pack everything and how much stuff she wanted to bring and all these different things, like for the first like hour, it was, I could manage that. I was like, okay, we're going with the flow. And, and you know, this is, this weekend is all about Judy. And then by within about an hour to two in the car and, and the conversations that Judy was having with other people on the phone, I just got a lot of anxiety, you know, a lot of anxiety. And I don't know where that came from. I mean, May, like, again, May was an interesting month and I just gotten back from a 10 day road trip with my child. I was home for two nights and then we went on a three day trip to Glenwood. So it was a lot going on. It's, it really was where I was at, right? Because I find that if I'm having an issue with someone and I'll get, I, I'm gonna stop this rabbit hole I'm on because we wanna talk about improvise. I'm projecting my own, for lack of a better term, I'm projecting my own shit when I'm pissed off at someone else, right? I'm projecting and I'm, I'm not allowing it to just be and to let it go. So, but I tried my best just to be there with Judy and be in the background, but I wasn't being who I am. And that's where the improvise, having that dynamic interaction, and I'm basing all of this stuff just, just on this. So this is a very uh, surface or high level yet low level type of um, explanation as best as I can understanding this ID. Um, but dynamic interaction, I didn't have that. I wasn't able to be, uh, I wasn't able to be myself because I was under stress in other areas of my life and I didn't have my friend and I didn't recognize that. I didn't have the friend I'm used to going on mountain drives with. She was in her zone and I've never seen her in the, in the years I've known her in that space where she was, as Paul said, flying. And so I felt like, well, she's an eagle. Well, I'll just, I think I'm an eagle too, but I'm just gonna go ahead and hibernate in my nest over here and let her do all the flying because she's really soaring. And that at times seeing someone else in their element and seeing them soar means more than me soaring with them. Although I know soaring with someone is better, but at the time I didn't know how to navigate that. So I just went ahead and sat in my nest, my eagle nest. <laughs> That's the best way. I, I, I hope that, I, I hope that makes sense. And if you have anything to add, Gail, or anyone else around the high improvise and high authenticate, and not to mention her and I are opposite. I'm, I'm low complete and she's high complete. So we were interested in hearing what you guys think about that too. Did that have something to do with it? I don't know. Yes, if I could add it, oh, Greg, you. Oh, sorry, I'm just answering. Go, Gail. Okay, um, if I could just add in, um, Alex, my husband and I are total opposites as well. Um, and the way we do things is we give each other space. So like when it's his event, I'm still there and I'm still doing my thing but I do it in a different way because he's already planned out everything that's going to happen. And for me, I just want things to be spontaneous. So I might wander off and go somewhere else and talk to some other people. I just don't need to be part of that. And I sometimes think that um, you honor yourself by honoring another person by being yourself and not by them being themselves. They don't have to be the queen bee 
and you're not anymore. You can still be who you are, but you just kind of temper it a different way. But as soon as you stop being true to yourself, then it becomes a different um, journey. And you're right, all the drives come into play. But you, the thing in a relationship is both parties love each other or care for each other or whatever it is because of what they bring. So as soon as one of you stops bringing, then everything changes. And sometimes you don't even see that and nor does the other person, but you at least were able to verbalize that and that's made for a fascinating conversation. Thank you, Gail. I have a question for you, uh, Alex. Now that now in retrospect, uh, I, I do a game with myself when I've done something where I really messed up and then I look at the damage I've done with my impulsiveness with my my eight two, so to speak. I look back, I say, what other options did I really have then? What else could I have done? Like, for example, kept my mouth shut or asked instead of told. And so now that you if, if Judy stayed exactly the same and she just played the same dare she be happy in her life thing, right? Um, what else could you have done in that moment, given your drives, given that she was making all these conversations and full of beans and all that? What other choices would you do now if you had a time machine? I really don't know. I've I don't got some. Know. Okay, great. I thought you would. I thought I, if, if you were going to really be you, three, seven, three, seven, and then all of a sudden there's a circus in front of you, there's a show going on. Right, there's all these new people. It's a new place, and you've got a, a ringmaster there setting it up. All those people to play with, all those conversations to be part of. If your attention was on the circus, I'm going to suggest you could have had a ball. Like either just played with those people, taken the conversation, went out and got more drinks. Uh, it just seems to me it was a gift of 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 a fun party, and but your attention would have had to have been on the party, not on the fact that you didn't make the party. Yeah, I agree. And, and, you know, I think that this ID conversation is, is a big part of it. And also coming off of a 10 day road trip with my son and the people I was around and, and we visited different family members and, um, there, there was, um, there was definitely some anxiety and what felt like depression that came off of that trip that bled into mine and Judy's trip that I didn't want to be around anybody because I'd been around people for so long and I was just ready to relax and have like a secluded weekend away. And I had a different vision for what that weekend was going to look like than Judy did because Judy was on it. She was, because usually, yeah, we can go out and talk to people all day and do the stuff and have fun. And, and we are the anomaly, like we're the weird ones. But this time Judy was the only weird one. And I was sad and mad that why, why wasn't I being weird? You know, <laughs> like, why am I being so normal, like negative and, and want to just be left alone? Like, usually I'm not like that. So it, there was a couple of factors that I believe went into that weekend. Yeah, it's not so much what, weekend. don't get lost in what caused that one. I'm looking forward to next time when some similar situation comes up, you go, because to me, you had two real clear choices. One is go be alone, go enjoy that place, go, go find a bush walk and, you know, and, and really enjoy the quiet time with you after your son thing or join the party that, that you had. And I think you weren't quite true to either one of those. You tried right. it, this, and, and, and I'm, I'm looking for what did you learn from this? And I'm wondering whether you could go, ah, here's that moment again where da da da, I'm not, it is, it is okay. You could have left Judy on her own. You said, I'm going to go for a wife for a while. She wouldn't have even noticed, right? So you would have been cool. But that's what I'm looking for. Not so much what caused that last perfect storm, but when the next storm comes, what could you do? Good idea. It sounds like you're saying follow my intuition and do what feels good for me at that time and be true to who, be true to myself and be honest about it. That's what he's really saying. That's what he's you really do saying. Know. You um, do know. I was sitting here listening to the conversation thinking that maybe the question is, what would you, what could you do to be true to yourself? You know, because um, it, maybe that might provoke 
make it easier for you to answer, but that's what it sounded like Greg was really asking of you. You know, Judy was in stride and being herself and you weren't, because, and for all good reason, you know, you didn't want to rain on her parade and so on. But if you look at it and think now, what could I have done to be more true to myself? What comes up for you? Maybe, maybe feeling that I have the, that Judy and I have a good enough friendship to where I could honestly and openly communicate about how exactly. I thought I was feeling. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. 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 I heard you say it before that you said, you know, I didn't feel I could have the literal open conversation with her because I didn't want to rain on her parade, you know. So again, beautiful values and intention there. But what, what it did was it shrunk you from being able to have the open, honest conversation that you need to have, you know, to, and I think that would be a great cue for you for any relationship is that we talk about what are your early warning signals of what pulls you out of stride. When you are a strong authenticator, I'm curious, Greg, for you and others who are strong authenticators, when you feel that you can't have an honest, open, direct conversation, I mean, is that not a really strong clue that, you need to have an open, direct conversation, you know, like that, that something's missing there. And that's like straight away onto it. And I don't, listening to you and Judy now, I don't think it would have necessarily gone south for you and Judy had you had that conversation at the time, you know, but if you could take something forward, it would be anytime you feel that you have to hold back on being your true voice, that's the time to be your true voice. Otherwise, things are going to go south. I, I, is that is that a fair call for other authenticators? I, I I'm curious as to what you all how that is for you. Yeah, yes, I, I agree with that. But I, I have a question. Um, for some reason, most of the time when that's happening, I, I get this feeling of of fear and dread of having to do that. It's like the environment isn't right for this, and yet, and and so I feel like I have to find the courage to go and have that frank and honest conversation. It's almost like I'm more worried about the consequence rather than the benefit, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So so where does that come from? My vote would be the avoid improvise. Um, we're similar and I can, <laughs> I very much relate to your statement. You desperately want to have the conversation, but you're worried about like, oh crap, what if it does not go well? Um, but yeah, that'd be the avoid improvise coming to play. Yeah, but but Alex is an improviser and she was, I don't know if you're worried, Alex, about it or whether you just, maybe you weren't worried for yourself or more worried for Judy. I don't know. How was it for you? Were, were you dreading that honest conversation? No, I really think it's because I wasn't clear. And Judy and I, one of our common core values um, on making decisions is having clarity. I didn't have clarity on why I wasn't enjoying our time together. So I just, I just didn't have the clarity to move forward. So I just sat back and did nothing, which is still doing something, right? If you do nothing, you're still doing something. So I just didn't know why I felt lost. I felt alone like and and judy had all these great strangers to go talk to so i thought good she's <laughs> taking care of her she's she's scratching that itch of communication and i am going to go scratch my itch of wanting to be alone because i just felt totally insecure and unauthentic and like a loser because i just didn't know what was wrong with me it was like yin and yang it sucked I did not, and I never felt like that around Judy. So the one, it was like that one person, she's like my partner, you know, that one person. And then you're like, something's got to be wrong with me because obviously they're rocking their life and I am just not, I didn't get it. I don't know. There's a great, there's a great teaching moment here with Jose's response and, and what you just said, Alex, is that's the difference between the seven and the, and the three there. Like Jose wasn't, what wasn't worried about what himself 
He was worried about the damage it might do and the risk to this and all that. That's where the word dread comes from. You're just like, going, oh, what the hell am I doing here? This isn't working. This feels horrible. This is yucky. And, and it's, it's more, it's a difference into both authenticates not being useful, but one's going, oh man, suck this for a joke. And Jose's going, oh shit, have I, have I screwed this up? You know, so this is a classic example of the up and down in the very same situation with two other drives that, that are similar. So that was great. Thanks guys. Well, and, and, and even for two authenticators, if one's not clear, and I find this a lot where an authenticator isn't clear, they just feel really lost. And that's what I'm hearing you say too, Alex, is that it's one thing about being useful and all, all of that and wanting to have a literal conversation. But in order to sort of be in the game to do that, you have to have a sense of clarity around what's even wrong in the first place or what is it you want in the first place. And it sounds like there was a, just a, feel, a total feeling of confusion that you didn't, you probably, your normal way would be to collaborate and talk that through to, to figure out the clarity yourself and you just felt stuck that you couldn't do that, right? Absolutely. Do yeah. you normally get clearer by talking to people about it? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I didn't, I didn't feel like I, I didn't feel like I could talk to Judy about it because she was so happy and I just wanted her to be happy. And so I thought, I'll just leave it alone until we have time to talk about it. And so a week later, I finally broke down and had like had a total meltdown on the phone with her. Not, I wasn't yelling or anything. I was just sad. I was like, I just, I feel like I don't have you anymore. And I'm really lonely. It was, yeah. I want to cry right now talking about it. Like it was yeah. terrible. Yeah, no. It is, and it's you know it's it's a really interesting piece because you're you're there for all the right reasons, but I, I would I would just this all meant to happen because it was for your growth and development. Like nothing has actually gone wrong here in the biggest scheme of things. What happened for you and Judy was not only meant to happen for you and Judy; it was meant to happen for us, so we could learn from your sharing, and so it's all part of the bigger plan, you know. But but the wise person will then learn from that and, and take some of those learnings as you go forward. And as I hear you sort of reflect on it now, it's, you know, I do need to be clear to be able to have a real conversation. I want to have the real conversation, but I need a level of clarity around that. And if I'm not clear, then I need to have a conversation to get clear, you know? Um, and if I can't have that conversation, that's the sign in itself that I need to have a conversation with that person. So it all comes down to, or my, I just got to talk to people, but I maybe need to point what's what's my different purpose behind the conversation. Grant raised a great question in the chat about would it have helped to share your vision? You know, and I was thinking that before you had you both had different maybe visions for the for the, for the weekend experience, but you didn't know all that at the time. But once you get in, you know, once you start to realise things aren't right, even to talk to well, and looking at your ID, you know, do I have a clear vision? Like, I need a clear vision. Well, yeah, I do. And it's different to what Judy's is. Let's talk about that, you know, or I need literal conversation. I'm not able to have that. Let's talk about that, you know. So I think your ID is giving you a lot of pointers, like a little compass pointing you in the right direction. They're all to do with conversations for different reasons. And I'm, I'm just hearing like a bunch of early warning signals that you could take with you from here on in. For, for your relationship with Judy and every other relationship that you have, for you to be your authentic self. you you I often describe your ID as a really clean ID because it doesn't want it doesn't want the stuff. It just wants it clean. You know, what's our vision? What are we here for? Let's get on and do it. And it's all good. We don't have to work at it, you know? So in order to keep it clean, these are maybe the things to stay aware of. And, and it will be brutal. There will be some people that you probably need to cut, you know, um, they're not willing to meet you where you need them to be. But you being you, you'd rather face reality and deal with that and keep it clean and stay in stride. Because when you're in stride, you're exactly like Judy. You know, there's a there's a, a big a big shadow that gets cast when you're really in full flight. And, oh, yeah. Go ahead, Judy. But, you know, I've, I've been reviewing my ID more and more as, as I'm on these calls. <laughs> and I... I think about, you know, my my total recall of everything. I can tell you dates and everything. And, and then also in terms of vision, my vision 
happens as I'm in the moment. And, and so when we're driving over to Glenwood, Alex says, you know what? We forgot our bathing suits and we're gonna to go to the hot springs. Well, so we need bathing suits. And then I said also, you know, and maybe we'd see a garage sale along the way. Because I love garage sales and, and haven't been to one in years. So we're three minutes away from the Airbnb and we see this sign, garage sale. And so we drive down there, it says open from two to four, no, from 10 to two, and it's 2.30. And so then we get out and start looking at things and that nothing is priced. So I, I said, Alex, I'm not picking up anything until I find out what these things cost. And I went up, found the lady. She said, this is a fundraiser for the Literacy Foundation and everything is by donation. <clears throat> so my vision right there, oh my God, all the people that I can help. So Alex has an SUV, which was completely full on the way home. Because it really stressed me out. Which she did not understand at all. What are you gonna what are you gonna do with this? And so I just make up something. I'm gonna give it to Michael, you know, or something. <laughs> I just make up stuff because I didn't know what I was gonna do with all that. I mean, I gave a donation of five hundred dollars to that to the foundation. And but I got thousands of dollars worth of of stuff all new stuff or just almost new and we did find our bathing suits too i've heard yeah. about weekends like this it just it just as i oh i'm in a gold mine here and i'm thinking let's just get the bathing suits and get on with the trip like <laughs> And we had totally different visions. And I know when I'm in that space, that's not normally like me. Like, yes, I do like to have a vision, but I know in my heart of hearts that things always work out perfectly for us when we just go moment by moment. Um, and I see in conversations I have with people, like I just had a, just real quick, had a conversation with a friend who's going to Mexico next month. And she goes, but my passport's not here yet. So I'm, I'm preparing to cancel that trip just in case everything doesn't work out. And I, in my mind, I said, no, it's going to get here on time. And I, you know, and I know that things always work out if we let them. Um, and not always in every situation when people die, like that really sucks or, you know, whatever, we get hurt. I don't know. But, you know, in general, like things usually, if we just let things go, it works out. And I was just hanging on to everything. I'm like, well, we got to go. We got to unpack and we got to get to the Airbnb. And now I'm getting hungry. So we have to figure out what we're going to do for dinner. And then there's food in the car. So we need to get it back to the thing. And I was like, and she's like, well, let's just stay here all day. I was like, oh my God, this whole weekend, we were three minutes from checking in. Okay. Like, and that's the beginning of the trip. So you can imagine I really got anxious. And then she wants to fill up the car with all these things. And I'm like, I can't see out the back and things are getting this is insane. And people probably think we're nuts and we're loaded. Oh God. I was just not in good space. And that was day, that was minute one of Glenwood. <laughs> like, <laughs> You know, I think Grant, Grant, the comment you made in the chat is really right, and um, that there are people that, <clears throat> with what you guys are sharing today and what you've gone through and what you've learned, there are people that, that just they don't even get to unpack that, and it just disintegrates their whole relationship. So, kudos to both of you. I, there's a lot we can take from this sharing that you know you've been so open and honest and raw with us around what you've experienced together. It's rich in learning irrespective of the example, it even just, I think, provokes, provokes for each of us to be really honest and, um, you know, true to ourselves in each of our own relationships. Um, otherwise, the equivalent of what happened to you will happen to that relationship for each of us, you know. Um, so there's the beating in stride, but I think, it's, I think it's really valuable to call out when we're in full flight, the people around us who aren't maybe as in stride could be really affected by that. And, and there may be some things to watch out for, you know, even if we're just talking to people in our family or in our teams and we know they're not in a good place, 
the more you're shining, the more they might be being adversely affected by that. And great self-awareness would be just to be more vigilant around that and, you know, conscious of those people, who they are, and maybe how you help them at the same time. Yeah. Anyone, Do I have... anyone... Go on, sorry, Alex. Do we have time for me to just talk for one minute uh, about Greg and I's conversation the other day? Of course. About being direct. Okay, I'll make it quick. Um, I was asking Greg, and thank you so much again for spending an hour with Judy and I to help me un unpack my ID. Because I was asking, how do I have literal and candid conversations as a high authenticate, but still practice unconditional encouragement and unconditional acceptance? Like, how do I, and this is a great example for when I was with Judy, like, I just wanted to practice my low verify, like just unconditionally love her, unconditionally accept the whole experience. But I didn't know how to have a literal and candid conversation with her, right? Because I was unclear. And so my complete drive wasn't being uh, my lack of my lower complete because freedom to pioneer, flexibility, variety, like I couldn't express those. And then um, my, my high improvise just wasn't even there because um, there wasn't that dynamic interaction. I'm sure there's a lot more that goes into that. But Greg told me, you can have literal and candid conversations while still being a quote unquote people pleaser. Those aren't his words, those are mine. I am a people pleaser, at least I have been for a long time. I just want people to like me. But I get frustrated that I don't get people to do what I want them to do. Like I don't lead well. I have a sales team. Why aren't they out selling? Like why... Why is that not happening? Well, because I just, I'm their, their cheerleader too much instead of being their coach and having that direct conversation. And he said, you can still show people that you love them or like them or whatever, that you care for them and then have that direct conversation. So you just kind of squeeze it in there together and you can be both at the same time. And it was like this light bulb went off where I was like, that's okay for me to do. And he's like, yeah, like, oh, sweet. So I just wanted to share that also it goes in line with this and also into my profession as well. So good. But, you know, there's 20 years it's taken us to get Greg to be in that place. Just kidding, Greg. 20 years. I want to get there in two days. Come on. But, but Alex, that's such a great point that Greg's made with you is that you are meeting, if you meet one dimension of your ID, but you don't pay attention to all of the needs, there will be a gap, you know, so you you need to provide the unconditional encouragement and acceptance but you also need to provide to meet your other needs which i need to have honesty and transparency and candor you know and i need the flexibility and i need it to be positive you know so you that's a great example and great way to bring this together to say you've got to meet the the needs of all of your drives in your case if you've got four equal drives so all four have you know have a need to be attended to for other people they'll have more dominant drives that will stand out more and more like in greg's case an eight and a two they're the, they're the really dominant ones um if he looks after those two he'll probably take care of the bulk of things but in your case what makes it a little more complex and where there's you know the, the self-awareness here is really valuable is you've got to you've got to find a way to to meet the needs of all four drives together you know um not just one of them so so we started by saying we unpack the id to help you understand it but in your case when you've got equal drives you do and anyone else who's got equal drives like that you've got to pay attention to all of the stronger drives you know yeah but how cool to know that you can that that you can have you can be encouraging like your team you could say to them like i've really got your back and i care about you and i want your success and we need to have a direct conversation about your performance you know, yeah. you, you can absolutely do that. Whenever you, your heart's in the right place and you're coming from a place of being true to yourself, it will land well for the other person. It yeah. sounds like a lot, Alex, but you, what we take to our people is you, look at your strong drives and there's a question you ask yourself for each of them. You've just got four great questions, which you, in a situation where you're out of stride, you go, okay, where's, where's the acceptance part of this? Where do, I, where do I connect and let them know that there's no judgment? Then that's the that's the verify. Then you actually say, what's the best use of me right now? What what's the best use of my skills, experience, life? Then third, the three is like, okay, what keeps this moving? What keeps it flowing? What keeps it what keeps it going? And the final one is, okay, where's the party? Where's the energy? What where's where's the juice for this? And when you look at all those, that can happen in seconds. 
But what you're doing is you're getting such a rounded picture of everything that you're going to energize all four drives to go online, online, online. It's like you would just feel this energy and things will pop. And that's when you guys are rocking, when you just are in the moment, when you're doing, I'll bet every time you look at a time in your life when you're pumping, there was pure on, pure on acceptance. You were feeling useful. The thing was rolling and there was great energy in the place. And when any one of those is missing, it's worth checking them all real quickly. What do you need, babe? Let's go. Because you're taking four people with you every time you go somewhere. <laughs> and they're all demanding. <laughs> Losing yeah. all drives together is the key to the success of this game. Just getting all your drives to work together. Because they complement each other, ironically enough, when they look opposite. Yeah, that's it. Thanks, Greg. You know, guys, we're just about out of time. This has been, I think, one of our best, um, you know, masterclasses in terms of the sharing. I have this, I had this um, little saying that vulnerability builds rapport. And when you um, share so openly and authentically like this, I hope it's been good for you, Judy and Alex. It's certainly been really rich in value for the rest of us. And we really appreciate you know, you opening your hearts and your experience like this for the benefit of all of us. So I hope it didn't cause you too much pain to relive some of what you went through um, and that the in sure. doing so, the learning for you has, has been, you know, stronger today as well. Yeah. Well, thanks to Judy. She's the one who said, we have to, we have to tell Paul once we figured it out. And I was like, okay. So we're, it's our, it's, we're, we're, we're grateful to have, you guys to share this with and to to get through all of this so our our lesson is everyone's game and that that yeah. means something so yeah it always is well thank you very much for sharing thanks everyone else for being on the call um i hope you take something really valuable from this too for your own relationships and uh, have a great week and we look forward to seeing you again hopefully again next week take care everybody bye thank you